Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the trial for a man accused of killing five people is expected to begin today. Officials in Whitley County say a positive identification has been made in a case from 2015. We'll have the latest details. And a cemetery in Letcher County was vandalized this past weekend. We will tell you about the people who volunteered their time to help clean it up. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. Your time is 632 on April the 9th. It's a Tuesday. We're past money, so everybody rejoice. Thank you for watching Mountain News this morning. Rejoice that it's not Monday, but hang your head a little bit because the fog that you are going to be welcomed with when you step out the door is thick and dense and it's covering almost the majority of the region. But Brandon, the good news you're going to give us today is that we won't see rain like we did yesterday. Right, and there's actual fog out there this morning, not the fog that you're filling in your head because exactly. you stayed up late to watch the national championship game last night. Yeah, I, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. I saw the end of it. It was, a, it was a wild action. But let's get into the forecast this morning as we start on the hazard Cam looking outside the WMT studios. Things are foggy as well mentioned this morning. That trend is going to continue over Whitesburg and across the region. Look at those visibility numbers close to zero in a lot of spots. Pinpoint Doppler radar is nice and quiet, so that's some good news. Temperatures mild in the 40s and 50s this morning and heading toward the 70s later today with sunshine mixing with those clouds after a while. I'll have the full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Well, all righty, Brandon, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Well, border security high on the White House's agenda. President Trump is working towards a tougher stance on migrants hoping to enter the United States, and there's been some criticism from both parties. John Lawrence reports. President Trump threatening to close the southern border to migrants. Whether it's asylum, whether it's uh, anything you want, it's illegal immigration, can't take you anymore. He's also been pushing to reinstate a policy that separates families, sources told CNN. This erratic, nasty style of governing is not solving any problems at the border. Sources say outgoing Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen argued the policy would invite court challenges. We have to follow our laws, uh, plain and simple. Others say it's a public relations disaster. If he's pushing an agenda to separate women from their children at the border, that's going to be a disastrous agenda. So I hope he's rethinking that. A senior administration official says a new policy, a so-called binary choice, is also being considered. It would offer a choice to migrant families, stay together in detention, or be split while the parents go through the legal process. Why in, in on God's green earth uh, would we separate children from their families? We are a better country than that. The binary choice proposal has been under discussion for months, according to a senior administration official. We're going to have a strong border or we're going to have a closed border. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Meanwhile, a federal judge says asylum seekers can remain in the United States as they wait for their immigration hearings. On Monday, California's Northern District Court placed a preliminary injunction on the Trump administration's policy. It goes into effect nationwide on April 12th. Well, our chief national political analyst, Greta Van Susteren, will launch a new weekly show called Full Court Press. Great Television, the parent owner of WYMT, announced the new program yesterday. The new weekend political show will focus on how policy actions, political decisions, and national events impact local communities across our country. Van Susteren's show will feature interviews with newsmakers, roundtable discussions, and investigative reports. Van Susteren is a veteran of CNN, MSNBC, as well as Fox News Channel, and is now bringing her no-nonsense approach to local television. I see the show being as putting politicians in the hot seat, essentially, and we're gonna and we're gonna just I'm just gonna ask blunt questions, get information for the viewers. Uh, you know, viewers are smart. I don't care what their life experiences are; they are smart. My job is to get them facts, to challenge guests and to provoke a robust debate, which also challenges all of us to think. Full Court Press begins this September right here on WYMT. Today, the trial for a man accused of killing five people is expected to begin. 
Jason Gibson faces four counts of murder and a fetal homicide charge after a crash in 2015 on the Hal Rogers Parkway. Charlene Lewis, Judy Pennington Adams, Tiffany Williams and Williams 23 month old son Kyson were all killed in the crash. Williams was also eight months pregnant at the time. The child did not survive. Lewis's daughter Chastity Collette says it's a painful memory, but they have been waiting years for this trial to begin. You are thankful that it's coming up, but then you also get the dread. And I know when we go in that courtroom, they're gonna, we're going to relive those moments. And that's, that's where the dread and the anxiety kind of sits in a little bit. Police say Gibson was under the influence at the time of the crash. It starts this morning, promptly at 9 in the morning. Officials in Whitley County say a positive identification has been made in a case from 2015 where human bones were found just off exit 11 in Williamsburg. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds has the latest. Several years ago, two people in Whitley County found human bones, which sent police and coroner Andy Crowley to Happy Hollow Road adjacent to Interstate 75. The human remains were sent to Frankfurt for an autopsy and in turn, was sent to University of Tennessee and then to um, Texas for identification. Taking nearly four years, but now an identification has been made. The bones belong to Richard Wood from Georgia, who went missing in 2014. Crowley says he was relieved to finally be able to give family some of the information they've been striving for for many years. I'm sure it's a, a, a hard morning every morning to wake up and still not knowing. Um, but we were able to uh, give them that closure. But the news, understandably, gave family members mixed emotions. At first, it was hurtful knowing that somebody you love had passed away, but then, too, it gave a relief. We don't have to worry no more about where you worry about. We already know that he's gone. They say they're keeping Richard's memory alive together. Richard would want us sitting here crying and being heartbroken, so we try to just remember the happy times that we had with him. Coroner Andy Crowley says the identification was made possible thanks to DNA from family. In Whitley County, I'm Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Whitley County Coroner Andy Crowley says a cause of death and manner of death is undetermined and is pending investigations. Well, a man is accused of punching a referee at a Western Kentucky AAU basketball game and knocking him unconscious. Investigators say Kean Menefield had a disagreement with the referee, and when the referee turned away, Menefield hit him. A family member of the referee says he has a broken collarbone, a crack in his sinus cavity, and a concussion. Menefield is charged with assault. An Eastern Kentucky family faced a tough goodbye yesterday. Police found 26-year-old Jordan Tackett buried last week in a shallow grave near a home in the Wayland community of Floyd County. Family members spent nearly two months searching for him. Yesterday was his funeral. Police arrested Wesley Martin and charged him with murder. Tackett's family and friends have a strong message for Martin. They don't even deserve jail time. He deserves to be dead. I think the man should get the death penalty. I'm sorry, but I, that's the way I feel. Martin is scheduled for a preliminary hearing in about one week. A judge set Martin's bond at $2 million. Services were held at Hall Funeral Home Chapel, and Jordan Tackett was taken to the Gessmanine Gardens in Prestonsburg. A cemetery in Letcher County was vandalized this past weekend. More than 40 gravestones were damaged. Chris Sexton, along with several others, volunteered their time Sunday to help clean up the mess. Luckily, none of our family um, and my friends, the, um, their gravesite wasn't messed up. But um, uh, other friends had uh, family and friends and stuff that buried here that uh, the gravesites was uh, demolished. They were, they were pushed over. They were probably about 40 stones that were turned over. Sexton says they are taking up donations to help fix the grave site. If you have any information about the vandalism, you can contact the Letcher County Sheriff's Office. Meanwhile, also in Letcher County, a group of students are putting the pedal to the metal on a school project. Students at the Area Technology Center are rebuilding a 1955 Chevy two-door post gasser. They start at the beginning of the school year, and this is the second time they have remodeled an old hot rod. And the money they make after selling this one will go to next year's project. You see it from start to finish. Um, you see uh, every aspect of, of the automobile, so brakes, electrical, 
suspension engine. I mean, you see it all. So it's a, it's a great project that involves everything automotive uh, and it gets them involved in something that they can use for the rest of their life. Pigman says the car will be for sale in the next couple of weeks. Well, at 641, Brandon's ready to give you a rundown on what to expect on this Tuesday. We've been talking about it all morning and they just issued one for the entire area. Dense fog advisory until 9 o'clock. That coming from the National Weather Service office at Jackson. And of course, we're seeing these numbers and basically zero visibility across the entire region. So be super careful this morning. Use those low beams. Watch out for those school buses and school kids. 49 Ashland, 55, actually 56 in Harlem. One of the warmer spots this morning. Not too bad on the coffee meter, but again, might need a little extra this morning, especially if you stayed up late watching the game last night. Out the door forecast, we are going to see temperatures in the 70s this afternoon under clearing skies. Will? All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, we have stories that are trending on WYMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. A 70-year-old man from Michigan was killed Saturday when he hit an unusual object while riding his motorcycle. And the U.S. State Department has banned 16 individuals from the U.S. for their role in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. We will tell you more.